Alright guys, welcome to your 18th biology tutorial and in this video I want to discuss how molecules transport across the membrane of a cell. Because in the last tutorial I was like, alright, you have a cell, things can go out, things can come in, bada bing, bada bang, that's all there is about transportation. But the thing is, that's not all there is, in that we need to take a closer look at the exact method that molecules cross the membrane of the cell. It's actually really important. So basically, there are two different methods of transportation across the membrane of the cell. One is called passive, and the other one is called active. But in this tutorial, we're only going to be looking at passive. So let's go ahead and get started, and I want to talk to you guys first about diffusion. But before we begin, I want to talk to you guys what passive means. Anytime you talk about passive transport, it means that no energy is required from the cell. Active, of course, means that the cell has to use some energy to get that crap across. But passive is just like the cell is just chilling there, doing nothing, and it doesn't require any energy because it's more of a natural process. It's what happens naturally, and we're going to see an example of this right now. So let's go ahead and first talk about the first type of passive transport, and that's called diffusion. Diffusion. Now, of course, whenever we're talking about biology, we mean that materials are going to be passing through, you know, the cell membrane. But let me go ahead and give you an even more simple example of diffusion. A just, I don't know, kind of a real life example. So if you had, I don't know, a big bucket and you had a screen in the bucket. Now, of course, a screen, and I'm talking about just a screen from like your screen door or something, we would call this semi permeable because some things can pass through of course some small things like water could pass through the screen some bigger things like I don't know a cheeseburger couldn't pass through that screen so let me go ahead and draw my bucket a little bit thicker alright there we go looking pretty good alright so we filled this bucket up with water so we filled it up with water and we put a screen in the middle. Now, of course, there are water molecules all around here. So this entire section right here is water. Now, say on one side of the screen that we dumped some, I don't know, what can we dump in there? Sugar or something. So there's a bunch of sugar molecules over here. Now, of course, sugar, what happens is it pretty much is going to dissolve in the water and of course on the left side right now as soon as we dump it in say that this is I don't know maybe it's green because we dumped a green pixie stick in there all that sugar is going to be concentrated in this area on the left hand side of the bucket however over time this is what's going to happen so now let me go and draw my freaking bucket again this is a pretty nice looking bucket by the way so we have our bucket and we have our screen and I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the heck those little lines are, I guess just holes in the screen or something. But anyways, over time, what the sugar is gonna do is the sugar molecules are gonna move from the area of higher concentration on the left hand side to lower concentration on the right hand side. So pretty much it's still gonna be filled with water, just like this. However, the sugar molecules are gonna look like this. So that's basically what diffusion is. The definition is a movement of molecules from areas of higher concentration. And by higher con concentration, pretty much mean areas where there are more molecules to lower concentration, areas where there are less molecules. So pretty much in diffusion, molecules spread out randomly and uniformly. So obviously, as we can see, just through the process of nature and how things spread out randomly, the sugar molecules aren't just going to, you know, remain packed on one side for no reason. Even though that there is a screen that's semi-permeable, they can go ahead and spread out in the water, and that's because sugar molecules are, of course, a lot smaller than the holes in the screen. And of course, in a cell, I'm not just talking, talking about, you know, how to put screens and buckets here. This screen right here would be the cell membrane. So that's the first process of how particles or molecules move past the cell membrane. Whenever you have a really small molecule like oxygen or carbon dioxide, what they can do is inside a cell, 
let me go ahead and draw the cell membrane. This is a cell. If you have a bunch of, I don't know, oxygen outside the cell, through natural process, it can go ahead and move to areas of lower concentration inside the cell. And remember, this process is called diffusion, a natural process. And remember, I said it's passive. So as you can see, the cell isn't doing anything. It isn't burning any calories, isn't you know converting any food to energy to make this happen. This is a natural process of the movement of molecules from areas of high concentration. This is high concentration. There are a lot of oxygen molecules out here to low concentration. Um, I'll just put low number of oxygen molecules. And that's what concentration is. High concentration means a lot of molecules. Low means not that many molecules. So that's what diffusion is, and this is how particles move across the cell membrane in a cell whenever we're talking about diffusion. So that's one method of passive transport, and in the next tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the other method of pass passive transport, and it's called osmosis. It's pretty cool, but I'll save that for the next video since this one's getting kind of long. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.